I was been told yesterday that the fasting time is at 9.15, so I can continue till 9.15. Yes. Yeah, that's right. Is that okay? Thank you so much. Even I am fasting, so. Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Vihari Nithai Gaura Chandra Jaya Nithai Gaura Chandra Jaya Jaya Prabhupada 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 Jaya Jaya Prabhupada श्रीमद् भागवतम की समवेत गौर भक्त वृंद की जगत गुरु शिल प्रभुपाद जी महाराज की सो वे गुरु डिस्कस इन थ्री सेशंस स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम 
today, now, in the evening and the tomorrow evening, about the glorious passing of Pitamaha Bhishma. And our seminar title is The Prayers from the Bed of Arrows. So before I could begin, I want to seek your blessings from each of you sitting here and listening online. I offer my respectful obeisances to your lotus feet and I seek your good wishes and blessings for this service. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskrityam Naram Chaiva Narottamam Devim Saraswatim Vyasam Tato Jayat Mudiraye Nasta Prayeshu Bhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhakti Bhavati Nashtike Krishna Yavasudevaya Devaki Nandanaya Chal Nanda Gopakumaraya Govinda Yanamo Namaha Janma de Asya Yatan Vayadi Taratas Charteshwa Bhignya Swarat Tene Brahmadhyadi Kavaye Muyanti Yatasuraya Tejo Varim Radam Yathavini Mayo Yatratri Saragom Rusha Dhamna Svena Sadani Rastakuhakam Satyam Param Dhimahi Dharma Projita Kaita Vatra Paramo Nirmat Saranam Satam Vedyam Vasta Vatra Vastu Shivadam Tapotrayan Mulanam Shumata Bhagavate Mahamuni Krute Kimva Pararishwaraha Sadhya Vrade Avrade Atra Kruti Bhi Sushu Shubhis Takshana Nigama Kalpatar Orgalitam Falam Shukam Khadam Vritadram Vasanyutam Vipata Bhagavatam Rasamalayam Vora Vora Sikabhu Vibhavaka Oma Jnana Timirandhasya Jnana Anjana Shalakaya Chakshurud Milatam Jena Tasmai Sri Gurave Namaha Mukam Karoti Vachalam Pangum Langayate Girim Yat Kripat Moham Vande Sri Gurum Dinatarinam Paramananda Madhavam Namam Vishnupadaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Shrimate Bhakti Vedanta Swamin Nitinamine Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesh Shunnevadhi Pashyad Deshitarine Nityananda Moham Nomi Sarvaranda Karamparam Harinama Pradam Deva Mavaduta Shiromanim Ananda Lila Bhaya Vigrahaya Hemam Vadivya Chavi Sundaraya Tasmai Maha Prema Rasa Pradaya Chaitanya Chandraya Namo Namaste He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastate Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrinda Vaneshwari Prishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Ila Chalani Vasaya Nityaya Paramatmane Balabhadra Subhadraya Sri Jagannathaya Te Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा सो व्हेन मदर कुंती वाज ऑफरिंग हर प्रेयर्स to Lord Krishna while he was departing for Dwarka <coughs> and uh, at that time Uttara came running seeking help from Lord Krishna 
and Lord Krishna personally saved Parikshit Maharaj. <coughs> so, Lord Krishna was uh, departing for Dwarka and uh, his purpose was over and Yudhishthi Maharaj was supposed to be the king now. Mahabharata battle was fought and Yudhishthi Maharaj was supposed to accept the kingdom. But Yudhishthi Maharaj himself was not ready for it. He was not willing to do so. So Yudhishthi Maharaj approached Krishna and requested him to please be there for some more time. Do not go. You have, we have fought the whole battle together, but there is a battle which needs to be fought within me and I need you for that. You helped Arjuna and you spoke the Bhagavad Gita, but here I am also fighting a similar battle. Before the war was fought, Arjuna was bewildered and Krishna spoke the entire Bhagavad Gita to him. After the war, Yudhishthira Maharaj was bewildered and he was seeking help from Lord Krishna. So on the request of Yudhishthira Maharaj, Lord Krishna changed his plan. And he said, and then Lord Krishna requested Yudhishthira Maharaj that, why don't you accept the kingdom? What is wrong? What is the problem? And Yudhishthira Maharaj said, no, the whole, you know, I am responsible for this whole uh, whole fight. It was, uh, uh, it was, the reason was that I should be established as a king of the whole world and that's why this battle was fought. And uh, Duryodhana was a perfect, uh, Duryodhana was doing his duty as a king very nicely. And so many explanations, so many reasons he was uh, giving to Lord Krishna. So there are so many people, there are so many personalities who were there and they were trying to explain to Yudhishthira Maharaj, Yudhishthira Maharaj, there was no fault of yours. Dhomi Rishi was trying to explain to him, you know, Veda Vyasji, who wrote four, four lakh verses, he was trying to explain to Yudhishthira Maharaj, Yudhishthira Maharaj, you know, come out of this illusion. You are Dharmaraj, you are personified, uh, uh, you know, Dharma. So, there is, no, there is no reason for you to lament like this. So, please accept the kingdom. So, so many personalities were coming ahead and giving various explanations to Yudhishthira Maharaj and trying to convince him that Maharaj, please accept the kingdom. But Yudhishthira was not getting convinced. So, Vishwanath Chakati Thakur, he gives an explanation that, you know, Lord Krishna is trying to convince someone and he is not getting convinced. Isn't it more bewildering? Hmm? Krishna was able to convince Arjuna in the battlefield of Kurukshetra. I mean, that is not a place to give a Bhagavad Gita class. In the middle of the battle of two armies, you know. But Krishna spoke the Bhagavad Gita to him, entire Bhagavad Gita, not a class, the whole Bhagavad Gita to him. And he convinced Arjuna. Here Yudhishthira Maharaj was bewildered and Krishna was trying to convince him and he was not getting convinced. So Vishwanath Chakra Thakur writes, that Krishna is known as Adbhut Karmana. Adbhut Karmana means he is, he, his pastimes are very, very amazing. So Lord Krishna from, out, from, from outside, from externally, he was trying to convince Yudhishthira Maharaj. But from within, as a Paramatma, as a Chaitya Guru in his heart, he was not allowing Yudhishthira Maharaj to accept was he, what he and the other rishis were trying to say. So that's how the pastimes were more bewildering. So Vishwanath Thakur, Thakur said that there was a purpose for this. The purpose was that the time has now come to establish the glories of Pitamaha Bhishma across the world. Because Pitamaha Bhishma fought the battle against Krishna. It seemed that Pitama Bhishma was on the side of Adharma. But Lord Krishna wanted to establish his glories. And that's why Krishna arranged this that Yudhishthira Maharaj was not getting convinced. So finally Krishna said, So Yudhishthira, you're not accepting my instructions. That's fine. You're not accepting Vyasa Deva's instructions. No, he is the author. He is the, when he says scriptures, it means Vyasa Dev. He has written four lakh verses. Come on, you should have accepted his instructions at least. Then he says, you are not accepting Dhomirish's instructions, you are not accepting the instructions of anybody else. But will you accept the instructions of 
पिता महाभीष्म and this shimala said definitely and uh, why idu shimala says because pitamah bhishma he knows as per time as per place as per circumstances what is dharma so so krishna indirectly meant to say all these people here are of no use said no 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 i will accept i will accept bishma so everybody all of them they went to kurukshetra again and there pitamah bishma was lying on the bed of arrows and <clears throat> so <clears throat> lord lord krishna wanted that pitama bhishma when he sees the pandavas again they should see him in a royal dress they should see yudhishthira maharaj as a king so krishna convinced yudhishthira maharaj that please wear your royal dress all of you and let's please pitama bhishma because he was on a verge of giving up his life so let us please him so <clears throat> everyone there they they all went and it it seemed like uh, and so many other great personalities also when they heard that pitamah bhishma a greatest mahajan the greatest devotee a personality who never lost a battle in his entire year entire life span of 400 years can you imagine a person who fought for thousands of battle and had not lost one battle that personality lost his last last battle in front of lord krishna so there were reasons that krishna wanted to prove that even though pitama bhishma in the greatest greatest fighter who was present in the entire world if that person also is fighting against dharma he will be defeated so <clears throat> there uh, so all of them they they went there with the first class horses decorated with gold ornaments and with them where where vyasarishi and dhomya muni and everybody all the assembled personalities they all went to meet pitamah bhishma and lord krishna personally again he became a chariot driver of krish of arjuna because pitamah bhishma wanted to see krishna serving as parth sarthi so lord krishna again took the reins of the horses in his hand he became again the chariot driver and he started drawing the horse horses to arjuna zrat towards kurukshetra <clears throat> so lord krishna wanted that pandavas should be present before uh, this uh, pitama bhishma in a very happy happy mood because you know when somebody is departing if you go and cry and lament in front of them oh ho 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 oh ho ho then you know what will what will the departed soul feel he sh- that his os that he will feel sorry for them but uh, krishna wanted that this shimara should give pleasure to pitama bhishma and hear from him about the science of uh, krishna consciousness <clears throat> so pitama bhishma was lying and all the great uh, uh, personalities were all sitting nearby and yudhishthira maharaj and all the pandavas they went and offered their respectful obeisances to pitama bhishma by touching his lotus feet they were all offering their pranams and uh, lord krishna also lord krishna also considering himself as a younger brother of yudhishthira lord krishna used to always consider himself that he is the younger brother of yudhishthira maharaj and with that with that uh, uh, mood he used to serve yudhishthira maharaj he used to serve the pandavas he used to serve everybody and take care of everything so here lord krishna also went and offered his respectful obeisances to pitama bhishma <coughs> and then sutu goswami mentions that the rishis like parvat muni narada dhomya vyasa bharad bharadvasha rishi bharadvaj muni parshuram along with his disciples vashishta muni vashishta is associated with lord ramchandra's past times indra pramada trita grata savada asita kakshivar gautama atri all these great personalities you know they came to hear from vishnu pitama now then who all came who are sukhdev goswami came there so 
uh, the great personality of Shukadeva Goswami himself, he came and heard uh, Shrimad Bhagavatam from uh, Pitama Vishma. You know, Shukadeva Goswami is a very interesting personality, we should all know. Shukadeva Goswami, <coughs> he heard Bhagavatam from Vyasadeva. He heard Mahabharata also from Vyasadeva. And Shukadeva Goswami, he went to the planets of Gandharva Lokas and he narrated the whole Mahabharata to them. And then he also spent time in Agats, in Malaya hills with Agatha Muni. He also spent time with uh, Narad Muni. He also spent time with so many other rishis. And so he is also here to meet Pitama Bhishma, hearing his final class. <coughs> Kashyapa Muni was there, Angiras Muni was there. Angiras Muni is Brahaspati. So the son of Angira Muni. So all these great personalities came there. And uh, <clears throat> they all knew that Pitama Bhishma is going to speak something very nectarian and something very useful for all of us. So that's why they all assembled there. And Sutta Goswami is saying, <clears throat> Krishnam cha tat prabhavagya asinam jagadishwaram ridhastam pujaya masa maya utpata vigraham and there Lord Krishna was also there. He was, Lord Krishna is, how is Lord Krishna? Krishnam cha tat prabhavagya. Krishna knows everything. And he, him, he has manifested his transcendental form by his internal potency. And that Lord Krishna was sitting also amongst all these great personalities. And Pitama Bhishma, Bhishma Dev, he knew about his glories. And that's why within his heart, he was worshipping Lord Krishna. Although Lord Krishna was touching the feet of Bhishma Pita Mahadev, but he, Bhishma Pita Mahabhishma, was worshipping who? Oh, Lord Krishna in his heart. And <clears throat> Sutta Goswami is saying that the sons of uh, Pandus were all sitting there and crying because they, they, they were not able to bear this thought that their grandfather, the great grandfather Pitama Bhishma is going to leave his body. So they were crying for the dying grandfather. And, and Bhishma Dev, uh, seeing, seeing them crying, seeing them lamenting, Bhishma Dev was congratulating them with the feeling that, Yudhishthi Maharaj, congratulations, you have won the war. Now you will be established as a king. So he was congratulating them. <coughs> And Pitama Bhishma was crying. There were tears in his, in his eyes. Why were there tears in his eyes? Because he was remembering all those things which Pandavas has gone through. Pandavas went through a lot of tribulations in their life. And Pitama Bhishma was remembering them. That how, what difficulties he has gone through. <clears throat> Pitama Bhishma was saying that Aho kashtam aho nyanyam yaduyam dharma nandana jivitam nartaham klishtam vipra dharma chutashraya. So Pitama Bhishma was saying <clears throat> that what terrible sufferings have all of you have gone through? Hmm? What terrible injustice have gone through all of, in your life? You know we are practicing, we are practicing devotees. We are chanting 16 rounds, following everything of attending Mangala Arati, doing our best, but still, you know, we go through a lot of sufferings in our life. And uh, so Pitama Bhishma, observing the, remembering all the sufferings of the Pandavas, he was saying to them, what terrible injustice you good souls suffer for being the sons of religion personified. And he was saying that, you even did not, you did not deserve actually to remain alive in the circumstances. The suffering sometimes which we go through in our life, those are such terrible sufferings that even sometimes we feel that we may, may will we leave or will we not? But still by the grace of the Lord, we leave for practicing more Krishna consciousness. Pitama is saying that Vishma Devi is saying that you were protected by three things. Vipra, Dharma, Achyut Ashraya. So there are three important things even for our life. Vipra means the Brahmanas, the sages. 
we should be taking shelter of the sages. Dharma, which in the scriptures there is, we mention about Bhagavad Dharma. We should know what is Bhagavad Dharma, what is Sanatan Dharma. Many a times, especially in India, the Sanatan Dharma, the word is very popular. But if you ask people in India what is Sanatan Dharma, nobody knows. There'll be there'll be fights, there'll be elections fought on that. And they people become victorious in the elections. But if you ask the people what is Sanatan Dharma, nobody knows. What is Sanatan Dharma? Sanatan means eternal. Dharma means occupation. That occupation of the living entity which cannot be separated from him at any given time. That is Sanatana Dharma. Like for example, uh, what, what is that what is our occupation? That occupation is rendering devotional service to the Lord. At least people in India they chant Jai Sri Ram, Jai Sri Ram, you know, in the elections and for so many reasons. At least they get purified by chanting. But the real reason of, of what is Sanatan Dharma, it is most of them they don't know. Hmm? So Sanatan Dharma is also called as Bhagavad Dharma, which is Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu Smaranam, Archanam, Vandanam, Dasyam, Sakhimatan, Evidanam. Sanatan Dharma is also called as Jaiva Dharma. Bhakti Vinod Thakur has written a whole book explaining what is Sanatan Dharma. The Sanatan Dharma, Nitya Dharma, Jaiva Dharma, Bhagavad Dharma, these are all the same. And what is that? To rendering devotional service to the Supreme Lord Shri Hari, to Lord Shri Krishna. In our relationship, uh, <coughs> the, best, the best way to uh, understand this Sanatana Dharma, our eternal occupation, is, uh, I'll give an example. Let's say for example, let's say that we are, you know, we, uh, we got birth from our parents, right? They are very, very small, chintu, you know, very, very tiny, and we were birth, when we took birth. Gradually, gradually, you know, years passed by, we, we, we went into secondary, we got primary education, we went into junior KG, senior KG, we went to, you know, uh, primary grade, secondary, secondary grade. In, while, we go to, while, while we went to our schools, our relationship with our parents was still intact. It never broke. From, from there, we went to college life. From college, we went to university. But in university also our relationship with our parents is always there. From there somebody might choose to get married. Somebody might choose to remain Brahmachari, whatever it is. But our still our relationship with parents is going to be still there. And people who chose to marry, for them they, they get married, they have children. But still the relationship with which they have with their parents is not going to change, even though they have become parents. Then what happens? The children grow up and they get married. You're, you become a grandfather. Still, your relationship with your parents doesn't change. It remains. So in any given circumstances, whichever species of life we are in, our relationship with the Lord is always there. And to, to understand that relationship, to love Him, that is Sanatan Dharma, that is Bhagavad Dharma. And that's why Prahlad Maharaj has said Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu Svaranam, Padasevanam, Archanam, Vandanam, Dasyam, Sakhyam, Atmanidhanam. Prahlad Maharaj is telling by, to understand what is Bhagavad Dharma, to understand Bhagavan, to understand uh, Bhakti, to understand the Bhakta, we should hear about Krishna's name, fame, pastimes. So here, Pitama is saying that, Bhishma Dev is saying that, you are always protected by Vipra. You are always protected by dharma, you are always protected by achyuta. Achyuta means Krishna. So we also in our lives, if we are also protected by these three things, if we take shelter of these three things, then what, whichever turbulence we are going through, we will easily be able to cross these things. And further he is saying <coughs> that, you know, we may, uh, he, was, he was remembering Pitama Bhishma was remembering Kunti. That Kunti has gone through immense suffering in her life. You know, when, when, a, 
when a married woman she loses her husband and who has five children to take care of them imagine her situation and that too she has to take care of them all alone without any support and that too when situations are not helpful you know she was in a royal family and the royal family was opposing her the royal family wanted to kill her children in that circumstances kunti raise her kids so that was such a difficult situation and especially for a single mother to take care of five children raising in a circumstances which are completely opposing and still practicing krishna consciousness remaining krishna conscious it was not easy and bhishma bhishma dev is remembering that she became a widow with many children and therefore she suffered greatly and when you and then he was saying that when you grew up when you we all of you pandavas when you grew up was her tension reduced no her tension increased huh? you are now fight you just fought the biggest battle huh, with your own relatives with your own brothers so she has gone through immense suffering in her life so we also we also you know this why the life of pandavas is been kept in bhagavatam so that we as practicing devotees sadhakas we also go through lot of just such things so we should get inspiration from them that how should we battle the situations in our life you know there is there are some ideals you know yudhishthir maharaj pitama uh, yudhishthir maharaj bhimsen nakul sahadev arjuna they they went through they were the most powerful but they went through lot of difficulties and they accepted these difficulties at the mercy of the lord parikshit maharaj when he was cursed by that shringi he could have easily contracted that curse he was very very powerful but he accepted that as krishna has come in the form of the curse chitraketu maharaj when parvati cursed chitraketu maharaj at that time chitraketu maharaj had attained the lotus feet of the sankarshana dev he was very powerful he could have contracted that curse but he did not do so he accepted that curse as krishna's arrangement in his life so you need to understand <coughs> this uh, this aspect and pitama <coughs> is saying that sarva kala krutam manne now we need to understand all these problems all these turbulences which come in our life what is the cause what is the reason we are devotees of the lord we are practicing krishna consciousness we are practicing devotional life very nicely still there are problems in our life the we we see problems in the life of pandavas we see we see life in the problems of so many other devotees right so there is a question you know that what is the lord doing is he doing something is he not doing something what is he doing so we so pitama bhishma is trying to explain this he is saying sarva kala krutam manye bhavatam cha yad yad priyam sapalo yad vashe loko vaya riva gad dhanavam what is he saying He is saying that in my opinion, Vishnu Devi is saying. What is he saying? In my opinion, this is all due to inevitable time. What? All the sufferings we go through, even though as practicing devotees, outside world, general people, they go, they go to problems, they go to accidents, they go to fall downs, they they go to jail, they go to sufferings. That's fine. But devotees going through that. You know, I remember when I was uh, when I'm 23 years back when I joined Krishna Consciousness. I was being told, if you chant Hare Krishna, there'll be no suffering in your life. All the sufferings will be taken away. Your life will be so happy. So your golden period of life will start. I was being preached like that, and I said, "Wow." So I I used to be. i was i was aspiring when will that golden period start in my life <coughs> so i realized it later on that it is taking shelter of chaitanya mahaprabhu is the only uh, is the only our is the only way of uh, attaining uh, peace in this world so bishma is saying that everything is happening in our lives is because of this inevitable time 
under whose control everyone in this every planet is carried away. So we need to understand that there is a control of time. There is a control of time all uh, on all all over the space, all over the universe, and all the big gigantic planets, including the sun, including the moon, including you know the air, the uh, everything is controlled by time. I mean, control means it's a uh, the fear of time. Sun rises on time, moon rises on time. The, all the devatas, they perform their duties on time. Agni Dev, Vayu Dev, and all these great personalities, they do their duties on time. You know, this is all because of the inevitable kala. You know, sometimes we, we see there are so many powerful kings in the world, but they, they, they become bankrupt. The royal families become bankrupt. So this is all because of the time. This time is very, very powerful. When we say time is very, very powerful, time is actually very, very powerful. Pitama Bhishma is saying that everyone has to bear the actions and reactions of the time as long as one is in the material world. So as long as we are here in this material world, although we are practicing devotees, although we are doing everything nicely, but still we have to bear the actions and reactions of the time. Is very important. We need to understand this. Huh? He is saying that you, this year, you should not think that you have committed some sinful activities and because of which you are suffering like this. Many times when we see other devotees suffering, you know, we say that probably he, is, he has committed some sinful activities or when we see ourselves are suffering, we also might be saying that, you know, we have committed some sinful activities and definitely that, that should be an appropriate mood. Huh? But the real reason Bhishma is saying that you, this should, you should not think that you have committed sins in your past birth and this is suffering because of your consequence. No. Even the most pious has to suffer the condition of the material nature. If you are in this material world, then time is going to act and we need to accept that. And uh, a pious man is faithful to the Lord for he is guided in now People who are generally, people who are not devotees, their suffering and our suffering is, is, is different. Here, the devotees take shelter of Vipra, Sadhus, Dharma and Lord Krishna. So, that's the difference between them. And this three guiding principle should be the aim of our life. Vishma is saying. And one should not be disturbed by the tricks of the eternal time. So whatever happens because of the reactions of the time, we should not get bewildered and simply continue practicing Krishna consciousness, taking shelter of Sadhu, Guru, Vaishnavas, Lord Krishna, following Dharma nicely. Hmm? We should not get bewildered by this time. And he is saying, <clears throat> Bhishma Devi is saying, Yatra Dharma Suto Raja Gada Panir Rukhodaraha Krishna Stri Gandivam Chapam Suhat Krishna Sato Vipahata he is saying that Pandavas, see, see your own life, you know. Yudhishthir, you are dharma personified. And in your team, who is who, who are in your team? Arjuna. Arjuna himself, who is the who is the greatest bowman of the universe, he is in your team. Then he is saying, you have Bhima. You know, imagine a family in which Yudhishthir Maharaj is there. Arjuna is there, Bhima is there, Lord Krishna himself is there as their guide, still there are sufferings. And when we get go through some trouble, we you know we cry, we lament, uh, we sometimes within our heart say, so Oh Krishna, why are you doing this to me? You know. But Krishna is trying to teach us that even even the most powerful personages on the planet, they go through this. So we need to accept this. Uh, we need to accept this. <clears throat> so, Kala is, what is Kala? What is time? This time is the desire of Lord Krishna. What is Kala? What is this time? This time is the desire of Lord Krishna. The forceful representative of Lord Krishna. 
so whatever is happening in this world is happening by the force of kala by the force of time and it is because of lord krishna's desire only so when we say causes of all causes are krishna it is very true even in our lives also whatever is happening in our we should understand in, in our life as devotees whatever is happening in our lives is only is because of them it's because of them we might to some extent accept not accept you know you this maharaj is also thinking that he is a sinful person he is this he is that we might also think like this oh i am i am very sinful i might have committed this and that so many reasons we give but the real reason bishma dev is saying that whatever is happening in the life of dedicated souls dedicated devotees of the lord it's because of inevitable time and is because of the will of the lord so desire of the lord so no one so one might say that who can know the plan of the lord how to know the plan of the lord what he wants bishma dev is saying no one can know the plan of lord krishna no one no one what he is going to do what is he planning in our lives in yudhishthir maharaj's life in all of our lives what krishna is planning for us nobody knows nobody knows 64 ha uh, 64 crore people how will you say 64 crore in here in million right 60 640 million people were fought the battle of kurukshetra and kunti maharani asked for a promise from krishna please make sure that my five kids are back you can we can continue fighting for years i have no problem but make sure my kids are back and said yes i'll bring that we'll bring them back so after all the difficulties and all the challenges pandavas were still alive fighting against the greatest of the fighters from across the world still they were alive so no one knows what is the plan of the lord in our life also we go through a lot of situations and we think that this what is going to happen next but every the lord has a plan for us and we need to accept that So Bhishma Devi is saying that even the great philosophers inquire exhaustively and they get bewildered. There are so many philosophers who has written so many philosophies, and they they are trying to understand the plan of the Lord in this world, right? They might not accept Krishna as supreme Lord. Forget about that. But there are so many philosophers who have wrote so many philosophies explaining the nature of the material world, and nobody has concluded correctly, and they are all they are all bewildered. So Bhishma Devi is saying nobody can know the plan of the Lord. Even the greatest philosophers, they inquire, and they 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 get they try to understand that, and they get bewildered. Mm-hmm. And further, he is saying that. <clears throat> therefore, I maintain. Bhishma Devi is saying to Pandavas. Therefore, I am maintaining this that this is for all of us also, as practicing devotees. To to us, Bhishma Devi is saying that. i maintain therefore in my opinion in my humble opinion all this is within the plan of the lord whatever is happening in the lives of devotees especially is all is all within the plan of lord krishna in your life and what is bishma saying accepting that inconceivable plan of the lord accepting accepting the plan of the lord ha huh? you must follow his desire that is the best way and easiest way to be happy in krishna consciousness is to have to be happy in this material world is that krishna has planned for each one of us so accepting that plan of the lord one can and following that we will be peaceful in our life so bishma dev is telling to yudhishthir yudhishthir if krishna wants you should become the king of the whole world accept that position accept to become the administrative head and and you should start and you will take good care of your citizens so go do it and you know further he is saying why some people might say why should i accept the plan of the lord why eshavay bhagavan sakshat आद्युनारायण कुमार मोयन माया लोकम गुड़स्तरित वृष्णु शो पिशमे सेइंग दैट श्री कृष्णा इज नो अदर देन द इनकंसीवेबल सुप्रीम 
personality of Godhead. He is the first Narayan, Adi Narayan, he is the supreme enjoyer. But he is moving among the descendants of King Vrishni as one of us. So he is bewildering all of us. But he is Adi Narayan, he is Krishna, he is the supreme personality of Godhead. So accepting his plan is the best way to be peaceful in this material world. Thank you so much. All of us have gone through a very austere vision like Adashi and I congratulate all of you who have successfully done that. And uh, any questions? We'll continue our seminar in the evening. And any questions? I know there'll be a lot of questions in this. So I have to give more time to the questions. Prabhu, please. And so if we don't know uh, what is Krishna's plan, yeah. <laughs> Following it, <laughs> whatever comes, <laughs> whatever comes. Or well, then we say everything is Krishna's plan. In the life of devotees, if if we are uh, taking shelter of vipra, dharma, achut, ashraya, if you are following dharma nicely, if you are following the taking the association of Vaishnavas, if we are uh, you know taking shelter of Lord Achyuta then definitely whatever happens in our life is, is, in his, is his inconceivable plan. To accept that is the best way. Yudhishthira Maharaj did not want to accept that, did not want to accept the kingdom. But that's what Bhishma, Bhishma Dev is saying, that accepting his desires, accepting his plan is the best way. Because no one knows his plan, so no one knows. If Bhishma Dev is saying no one knows his plan, so no one knows. So only way is that sadhu is there, gurus are there, shastra is there, lord is there, follow, dharma is there. So we should just follow that, do our best. That is the easiest way. Hmm. Yes, Prabhu. Same. Same. Uh, thank you, Prabhu. Uh, just wanted some more, uh, how do you say? explanation of why Kala is the design of Krishna? Huh. There, there, there is a, this Kala is, is working as a fear factor. You know? The sun rises because of that Kala, because of that fear. The moon rises because of the Kala. The, 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 the Devatas and everybody, they function properly as because of the fear of that Kala. It's very difficult to understand uh, the nature of Kala. It's because of uh, the great authorities like Bhishma, we are able to understand that Kala is the representation of uh, Supreme Lord. He, it is called as Prabhupada writes, forceful representative of Krishna. Hmm? Forceful. Means you, it is that fear that forces us to, ex to accept, you know, uh, the time, what, what time wants us to do. Hmm? So, Kala is like that, forceful representative of Krishna. But in other places he also says that the desire of Lord Krishna, hmm? the desire of Lord Krishna is Kala. Yes, Prabhuji. I was uh, hearing these uh, nice details uh, you mentioned about Sukadeva Goswami or Bhishma Dev and I was wondering where can I find those details or what places do you... Like in this chapter, in the ninth chapter, when uh, all these great personalities, their names are mentioned, who came to hear from Bhishma Dev. So in that there is a description given about in detail. What I spoke that Sukadeva Goswami he heard Mahabharata also from his father and he also heard Srimad Bhagavatam and Shukdev Goswami goes and explains the Mahabharata to the Gandharvas. So that is also mentioned in the purpose. So usually we are very fortunate that Prabhupadji has given us the essence of uh, writings of all the Acharyas. So uh, everything, is, everything is there in the purpose, provided we read them. Provided we read them. 
Yes, please. Krishna Prabhu, could you explain how um, Kala and Karma are related? Because you just explained that everything is due to the time, yeah. you know, and it's not, you know, yes. something bad happens or something yes. good, it's yes. not that our karma. Okay. So, uh, thank you so much, Mataji, for this question. So, we need to understand there are two religious, religious principles. One is general religious principle and one is transcendental religious principle. When if you, we, we all know about the life of Ajamil. You know, Ajamil was a very degraded soul. He was addicted to a prostitute, he was engaged in so many filthy activities. But <clears throat> his, uh, his one of the son, the last son of Ajamil was named Narayana. That was accidentally, by chance. The sadhus came, the sages, they came to the village, the village of there is, a, there is a place called as Kannauj. There is still near Kanpur in, in Uttar Pradesh. There is, a st there is a village called as Kannauj. It still exists. In that Kannauj, this, this incident of Ajamil took place. And in that village, the sages once came there and they were asking, can you explain, uh, can you help us find the Brahmana's house in this village so that we can go and stay there, take some prasadam and everything. And they, the people misguided them and said, Oh, Ajamil is the greatest Brahmana in this village. You should go there. And Ajamil was a Brahmana, but he was, he was fallen from his position. So when, this, when they went there at that time, Ajamil's wife was carrying the tenth, the tenth baby in the womb. So they saw the situation of Ajamil and they requested the, 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 the wife came ahead and said, can, What can I serve you? And said, No, no, we don't want anything. And we just want that this son who will be born in your womb, please name him Narayan. When Ajamil came in the evening and he heard, Narayan, okay, no problem, we'll, ex we'll accept that name. So, Ajamil's life was, he was going through a hellish situation in his life, added to it to a prostitute, doing all kinds of abominable actions in his life. But that Ajamil, who was under the jurisdiction of Yamaraji, you know. All the Yamaraji, there are separate department, you know. There are separate person assigned to write down all the activities of Yamaraji. So when Ajamil was on the deathbed, at that time, the, because Ajamil committed sins as per his mind, from his kaya, vacha, karmana, mind, actions, and body, three Yamadutas came to take. Usually two come, but for him, the three come. There, I have also heard an incident where many have come for a particular soul. Hmm? So here uh, for Ajamil, three souls came. So three Yamadutas came to take him. And he, what they put the Yamapash, right? that, is a, that is a rope which they carry. Why they carry that rope? To drag the souls from the body because the soul is very attached to the body, doesn't want to give it up. So they, they put the Yamapasha, that rope, and they drag the soul out from the body. And at just at that time, Ajamil called for his son Narayana. And at that time, because he called his son Narayana, so with every syllable, a, a, a person come, came for rescue. You know, so Vishnu Dutta came for Na, Ra, Ya, Na. So four of the associates of the Lord came for rescue of Ajamil. And then there was a conversation and they, they with their Sudarshan Chakra, they cut off that rope of Ajamil and Ajamil was freed. Then what happened, they questioned, Vishnu Dutas questioned the Yamadutas that what is dharma and on what basis are you taking Ajamil? And they said, what basis means what? He is a rascal. He is a Duratma. And the Vishnu Dutas were saying, he is a Duratma, he is a Mahatma. And the Yamadutas were saying, Mahatma? He meant check the records, huh? <laughs> call the office, if Ajamil is Duratma or Mahatma, he said he is Duratma. Hmm? And then there is a now this is the question to answer to your question. There a discussion started of what is general religious principles and what is transcendental religious principle. So in general, people are under the influence of general religious principles and, and they are under the direct jurisdiction of Yamaraji. And whatever they do, you know, their, their karmic life, whatever they do good 
they will get the result. If they have done some pious activity, they will get good, good result. If they get, if they have done something uh, impious activities, they will be punished, right? But, Vishnudas were trying to explain that Ajamil does not come under the jurisdiction of Yamraji. He does not come under the general circumstances. For him, the principles of transcendental religious principle, which is called as Bhagavad Dharma, is applicable. So they explain why. Because Ajamil unknowingly took shelter of the holy name of Lord Krishna, of Lord Narayana. And even if person chants once the name of Lord Hari, is sufficient for him. He has chanted day in and day out. Ajamil, when you imagine us, there is a child in our house and his name is Narayan, for example. So the best way, just by take, so many times the parents take their, the child's name. Oh Narayana, come from your mother's place to my place. Narayana, take, eat this. Narayana, do this. Narayana, do that. Narayana, don't go there. Narayana, what are you doing? Narayana, this. Narayana, that. I have three kids, so I have full experience of that. We chant more rounds of their names than the 16 rounds in our, in our house, you know. We chant, but, you know, they, we chant their now, rounds as well. Gomati, Bharat, Taya, we chant their names as well. Hmm? So many times. So they were saying, Vishuddhas were saying, because he chanted the name of Lord Narayana. When Yamaduta said, he is, that is the son, of, that is the name of his son Narayana. But he said, no, it doesn't matter. Even though he is his name of Sun Narayana, but whose name is that? It's the name of Lord Narayana. And because he is unknowingly chanted the name of Narayana, he does not come under the jurisdiction of Yamaraj. He does not come under your jurisdiction. So go back. Otherwise we will have to kill you. So you go back. So we should then Yamadutas go back again and, and try to understand from Yamaraji about this whole, whole thing. And Yamaraji also explained the same thing to them that for those who are knowingly or unknowingly, they are chanting the names of the Lord, please do not bring them to me because they are not under our jurisdiction. This also confirms the fact of Vishnu Pitama saying that then who controls the life of such people? Krishna. If they are not, if, if, if for us, if you see, if we are not under the jurisdiction of Yamaraji, if their principles don't apply for us, then whose principles apply on us? The principles of Bhagavad Dharma. The transcendental religious principles apply on us. And who is our protector? Who is our maintainer? Gopinath Mamani Vedana Suno Gopinath So he is our everything. Tomeva Mata Chapita, Tomeva, Tomeva Banduja Sakha, Tomeva, Tomeva Vidya Dravinam, Tomeva, Tomeva Sarvam Mama Deva Deva. So he is our everything. So our life is under the jurisdiction of transcendental religious principles. So the principles of Bhagavad Dharma apply to us. We won't be treated, we are special personalities. Yes, each and every, I will give you another example. I will tell you another example. When you know when Lord Ramchandra went in exile, right? At that time, Lord Chandra made a friend, Nishadraj. Nishadraj was the king of Adivasis. He was most dignified. They do everything. But Lord, somehow he came in contact with Lord, Lord Ramachandra and Lord Ramchandra accepted him as his friend. He embraced him also. So, Bharat, when he, Bharat, when he, he was not in, his, not in Ayodhya at that time, he was, when Lord Ramchandra was asked to leave, so Bharat, when he understood that Lord Ramchandra has gone in exile in the forest, so he, with Vashishtha Muni and the entire Ayodhya, Ayodhya Vasis, they all went to request Lord Ramchandra to come back. Right? So they were walking. And during that time, Nishadraj was like, you know, he had a big army with him. And when he saw that Ayodhya Vasis are coming, so for, it, for, for a, some time he thought that probably the Ayodhya Vasis, Bharat is coming with an army to kill Lord Ramchandra. So Nishadra said, that is not possible. Even we have to fight for our life, but we will fight for Lord Ramchandra. We will fight against the biggest almighty army of Ayodhya. And they all got ready to fight against Bharat. But at that time some uh, experienced old age person in his in his uh, in Nishadraja's army told suggested him why don't you send a, 
a messenger and check out what is the situation. So messenger was sent and they found out that Bharat is coming barefoot and they are all crying and they are all chanting the name of Lord Ram. And then Nishadra said, oh. But then when Bharat Maharaj and all the Ayodhyavasis, they all met Nishadraj. Who was Nishadraj? The king of Adivasis. People who stay in forest, they eat everything, they do everything. Just understand these things. They eat everything, they do everything. And Vashishtaji introduced Bharat that this is Nishad, this is, this is the friend of Lord, Lord Ramachandra. And Vashishji is saying that Nishad Raj is the ornament of the earth. What is he saying? What is Vashishji saying? Bharat, Nishad, Nishad is the ornament of this planet. He is saying Vaishnavas are the ornament of the planet. Because Lord Ramchandra has accepted him as his friend, he has become the ornament of the earth. So Bharat went and embraced Nishad Raj. So we need to understand that when we are practicing devote, when practicing Krishna consciousness, the devotees are the ornament of the earth. They are the most special people on the planet. The devatas treat all of you very specially. All the, all the, all the management of the Supreme Lord, they all treat all of you very specially. The, Lord as, as, the Lord's associates, they treat all of you very specially. So all of you are not ordinary souls. You are all very special personalities who are practicing Krishna consciousness in the age of Kali. This is against the current of, you know, against the current. All of, all of you are practicing so nicely. Serving the Lord, doing everything. So this is all of your glorious devotees. And you are all under the jurisdiction of Bhagavad Dharma. Hare Krishna. Any questions for any? Yes. Can I ask one more? Yeah, we have time. Uh, Babaji, you also spoke about uh, uh, the difficulties. So sometimes in, the, in our life, there can be, you know, huge problems. Yeah. And uh, this, this, uh, this taka, this heat, this suffering, sometimes does not permit us maybe to see yeah. You know, we have the proper perception. Yeah. Yeah. So how can we find uh, again our faith in Krishna that we go through these intense times? Yeah. So, you know, that's why we need to uh, practice Krishna consciousness under the guidance of devotees. You know, Bharat Maharaj, he gave up everything and went to forest and then he became attached to a deer. In that point, the Acharyas say that there, if Bharat Maharaj is associating with devotees, they could have guided him accordingly. But he was all alone. So, Krishna consciousness means bhakti has to be done under the guidance of the, of the Vaishnavas. Vaishnavas means who are, uh, you know, who are very properly situated, who, are, who know as per the time, place and circumstances, what is dharma, you know. They know, they are, they can guide people. Hmm? Whom, so there is, you know, you, you, I, I, you mean, I am, you understand what I mean. Hmm? So, when the difficult times are there, the best way is to keep calm hmm? and allow the time to pass. And then still if it is, if we are affected by that, then the best is to seek guidance from the Vaishnavas hmm? who knows who know scriptures, who know what is dharma as per time, place and circumstances, who know what is the transcendentalist principle, so we should see guidance from them. And they will guide us. So many times the Pandavas got bewildered, irritated, frustrated also many times. But they took guidance. They took guidance from Krishna. They took guidance from others. Any other questions? Yes, Prabhupada. It's uh, just a philosophical question. Uh, uh, we say Krishna has no origin, uh, but uh, it also could be said that Krishna has no origin than himself. What could be the difference between the two? 
I surrender to you. <laughs> Any other question? So we said that everything is the arrangement of Krishna. That's all done by him. But like we see in the life of uh, Parikshi Maharaj, that the, um, the astrologers were saying exactly what's going to happen in his life. So then I wonder, also his, his response is also arrangement of Krishna? Mm -hmm. uh, his response of giving up everything and taking children of Shukdev was something in that? His response to the curse and all this, is this also arrangement? Actually, Parikshit Maharaj when he got the curse, but before that there was a situation which is not in the Bhagavatam, it is there in elsewhere. Uh, so Udhavji, so queens of Dwarka, they, Parikshit Maharaj was enthroned as the king of the whole world by Yudhishthi Maharaj and Vajranam was made the king of Mathura. So both of, so once the queens of Dwarka along with Parikshit Maharaj, they went to meet Vajranav because the queens of Dwarka were in separation from Krishna. But when they saw Kalindi, Yamuna, Yamuna was very happy. Yamuna was not crying, was not lamenting. So they asked Yamuna ji, what is your problem? What is your happy, reason of your happiness? He said, I take shelter of Bhagavatam. So then she asked, can you also help us? They said, no, you have to go and take shelter of Uddhava. So where is Uddhava? He's, they said, Uddhava is in Kusum Swarovar in Govardhan. So they all went to Vajranab with Parikshit and with, with all of them they, they met Shandilya Muni and all of it Shandilya Muni they went to meet Uddhavji, they performed Nam Sankirtan and while they were performing Sankirtan, Uddhavji manifested from there and he said, okay, I'll speak the whole Bhagavatam for one month. But then Uddhava told Parikshit, Parikshit, you have to go now. He said, what? I have to go? He said, yes, you have to go because Kali Yuga is showing its effect, so go and subdue Kali. And that time Uddhava told Maharaj Parishit that you are speaking Bhagavatam, the glories of Lord Hari, and you are asking me I should not sit for the whole month, one month nectar in Bhagavatam Katha in the lotus foot of Giriraj. And you want, we shall not hear. I shall not hear. I said, yes, you go and take care of Kali Yuga, otherwise you will disturb everyone. And when will I get a chance to hear Bhagavatam? He said, don't worry, the last seven days of your life. Krishna will send Shukadeva Goswami. So he knew. Parishit Maharaj knew that uh, some, something will happen. And uh, so he knew what he has to do. So Parishit Maharaj was already indicated by Uddhava that last seven days of your life you have to take shelter of Shumat Bhagavatam. And whatever I am narrating in one month, he will narrate to you in seven days. He'll give you a crash course in Bhagavatam. <laughs> so, so, Parikshit Maharaj knew that situation is going to arise in his life. And he, that's why he did not react. He took it as Krishna's arrangement. Any, any, uh, any difficult situation which comes in our life, it is very important how we, how we face it, how we approach it. If our approach is that it's Krishna's arrangement in our life, if you see that, I think this, the Lord has some plan in this, so then things will be very peaceful for us. But if we on our own wants to try the situation, try the fate, try, the, try to change the destiny, definitely Krishna can change the destiny. But if we accept as the inconsolable plan of the Lord, things will be much better. Hare Krishna. Granthra Shumat Bhagavatam ki Samaveta Gaura Bhakta Vrinda ki